Welcome to the Teacher Incentive Allotment. This video is designed to be an introduction to TIA for new district TIA leads. Please note that information is accurate as of the fall of 22. Our goals for this video are to help districts understand the TIA requirements and timelines, identify next steps based on their TIA cohort and approval status, and learn how to access our TIA resources and training materials. TIA leads can access online resources and supports, first at our website, tiatexas.org. Our website contains information regarding local designation systems, allotments, an interactive funding map, and a resources page for webinars and evergreen resources. We also have a Google Drive for our 22-23 webinar materials and recordings. Please contact TIA at tea.texas.gov for questions and support or to request access to the Google Drive. This is a reminder that TIA is here to support districts as they build systems that help recruit teachers, incentivize them to stay, and make teaching a more desirable profession. TEA is here to support districts design an effective and individualized local designation system that meets their needs and goals for recruitment and retention. Here are a few key points about how the teacher incentive allotment works. TIA established three levels of designation, recognized, exemplary, and master. Designations are distinctions that are awarded to highly effective teachers. Districts that employ designated teachers will receive between three and 32K annually per designated teacher. The allotment is structured based on the campus of the designated teacher's employment. Greater funding is issued for teachers who are working at high needs or rural campuses. Districts must spend at least 90% of the funds on teacher compensation on the campus where the designated teacher works. Once a designation is issued, it has a five-year validity period regardless of whether or not the teacher is teaching or if they have moved campuses. The teacher incentive allotment is funded through the foundation school program. Each designated teacher allotment is dependent on the level of designation and their campus of employment, with additional funding for high needs and rural campuses. The recognized designation allotment ranges from 3 to 9K, exemplary from 6 to 18K, and master from 12 to 32K. We'd like to take a moment to highlight how TIA is different from past statewide incentive programs, such as TEAG or career ladders. Firstly, it's written into statute and funded through the foundation school program, providing adequate and sustainable funding. TIA requires inter-rater reliability and multi-measure evaluations when determining teacher designations. It's available for all Texas teachers and not limited to those in star tested assignments. It also encourages professional collaboration as districts work to support teachers in earning designations. TIA is designed to increase district retention and recruitment rates. There are two pathways through which a teacher can earn a designation. The first is through their district's local designation system. In this pathway, a district creates a local system to identify and designate their high-performing teachers. This requires a two-step application and approval process through TEA. Once approved, districts can determine and issue designations annually at either the recognized exemplary or master level. The second pathway is through national board certification. This pathway does not require a local designation system. Individual teachers who work as classroom teachers and are national board certified can earn an automatic recognized designation through TEA. In some cases, districts choose to support cohorts of candidates to go through the national board certification process. If you're a new district TIA lead, your district likely has a local designation system already in place or is in the process of applying or creating a local designation system. Local designation systems are optional and allow districts to identify and designate their highly effective teachers. Designations are based on both teacher performance data in conjunction with statewide performance standards. TEA requires an application and approval process to ensure that designation systems are based on valid and reliable data and use fair designation practices. Districts receive funds for designated teachers they employ, regardless of the designation source. District designation systems are based on three to four components. The first two components, teacher observation and student growth, provide the data by which the district will designate teachers. Teacher observation must be based on T-tests or an aligned rubric. On the TIA system application, the district will demonstrate evidence of calibration and data analysis throughout their observation practices. The student growth measures are determined by the district. On the system application, the district will show evidence of reliability in the development, administration, and scoring of their growth measures. The third component is the district spending plan. Districts must spend at least 90% of their allotment on teacher compensation for student-facing instructional roles. 
They may reserve up to 10% for supporting the TIA system or in supporting teachers and earning designations. All funds must be spent by August 31st each year. Lastly, districts may consider adding additional factors when they make designation decisions. Some examples include mentoring, teacher leadership, or surveys. Designations are dependent upon a two-step approval process through TEA. The first is an application. Districts will outline their proposed designation system and submit a system application to TEA. Once approved, the district can begin implementing its system. The step two approval requires district to submit teacher effectiveness data to Texas Tech University before TEA will issue a final approval. Now we'll take a look at the overall application and approval timeline. Before applying for a local designation system is the larger work of developing the system and engaging with stakeholders. The district will make key decisions around who is eligible for a designation, the designation criteria and performance data, and the district's proposed compensation plan. Once those decisions are made, the district can begin completing their system application and submitting it in the spring of year one. The district must also submit a Texas Tech teacher, administer a Texas Tech teacher buy-in survey. Once the application is accepted, the district moves into year two, also known as the data capture year. This is the year where the district begins implementing their system as described in their system application and collecting teacher performance data that will eventually be used to designate teachers. Starting in year two, districts have the option to apply for future system expansions and modifications. After the data capture year, the district moves into year three. This is where they'll determine designations using the prior year performance data and submit their data and proposed designations to Texas Tech for a full data validation process. After TEA reviews the results of data validation, they'll issue system approval decisions. If the district system is approved, their designations will be processed and will calculate their first year of allotment funds. They can then begin compensating teachers. They have the continued option to apply for system expansions and modifications. Once the system is approved, the district is required to complete an annual evaluation survey and program submission. After the full system approval, the district has the option each fall to submit new or higher designations and data. They continue to have the option to expand or modify their system and must submit an annual, evaluate, an annual program submission and administer an annual evaluation survey. In the years following their initial accepted system application, districts can apply to expand or modify their system. In these cases, districts may decide they want to add or modify their eligible campuses or teaching assignments, add or adjust their student growth measures or teacher observation rubrics, or make adjustments to their TIA spending plan. Applications for expanding and modifying the system are due annually in April. System changes will take effect the following school year, and fully approved systems will not be required to repeat their data capture year. If you're a new TIA lead, you may have heard or seen the word cohort used on our TIA website. TEA accepts new system applications each spring to be implemented the following school year. A cohort is a group of districts beginning on a similar application and approval track. They're based on the intended data capture year. At TIA's inception, we started with cohort A with a data capture year of 2018-2019. Thereafter, each application year we've labeled with a sequential cohort of B through F. Districts that are not yet involved with TIA may submit a non-binding letter of intent with the anticipated cohort. If you're unsure of your district's cohort or TIA status, please email us at tia at tea.texas.gov. Let's take a look at our cohort tracks and where different districts and cohorts are in 2022-2023. Cohorts G and beyond are still developing their local designation system and have not yet applied for TIA. Districts that are cohort F are in year one, their application year. They are scheduled to apply with their local designation system in the spring of 2023. Cohort E districts on track currently have an accepted application and are in year two or data capture year. Cohort D districts are in year three. They are working towards system approval in their first year of designations and funding. And our cohort A through C districts with full system approval are in the post approval phase where they can issue designations annually. Note that we've used the term on track. Because TIA has a two-step approval process and districts have lots of freedom when it comes to their local designation system implementation, they may not always remain with the same cohort throughout their journey. As we mentioned in the previous slide, a district may not remain on their original or intended cohort track. One example is if a district chooses to postpone the application year. 
In some cases, the district may decide to delay their application if the system is not fully designed or ready to apply by the application deadline. For example, Petunia ISD submitted a letter of intent to apply with Cohort D, but due to TIA lead turnover and limited stakeholder engagement, the district chose not to apply until the following year. Petunia ISD may now identify as a Cohort E district. Another reason for moving cohorts is a postponed data submission. Districts have the choice to delay data submission and repeat their data capture year. For example, Geranium ISD applied with Cohort C and their application was accepted. However, after carefully examining their data and their level of system implementation, the district decides to repeat their data capture year and submit data with a Cohort D timeline. Another example is if the district chooses to postpone their data capture. This is when a district opts to delay data capture and system implementation after the application is accepted. For example, Flower ISD applied with Cohort C with an anticipated data capture year of 2020-2021. Their application was accepted. However, due to school closures, Flower ISD chose to delay their data capture until 21-22. Flower ISD may identify with both Cohort C and D, but is on a Cohort D timeline. In some cases, a district's cohort track is delayed because their application or full system was denied at one of the two approval stages. If a system application is denied, the district can reapply with a later cohort. For example, PNE ISD submitted a Cohort D system application, but the application was denied. In this case, the district reapplied with Cohort E and the application was accepted. While PNE ISD was originally on a Cohort D track, they are now in their data capture year on a Cohort E timeline. The second scenario is if the system is denied following data validation. The system application remains accepted and active, and the district can repeat the data capture year with a later cohort when the system is rejected after data validation. For example, Rose ISD had an accepted cohort C application, but they did not pass data validation, and their system was not fully approved. They then repeated their data capture year and are now on a cohort D timeline. Why is cohort identification important? First, our TIA team provides technical assistance specific to each cohort or group of cohorts, depending on where they're at in their TIA journey. This ensures that districts only receive relevant information and allows them to build community with other districts that are in the same phase of implementation. Second, TEA updates commissioner rules and our cohort applications annually. Knowing a district's original cohort and current cohort track provides the team context when providing one-on-one -on -one support to districts. One common question is what are the next steps if a district cohort is delayed, either by the district choice or due to not being approved at one of the stages of approval? TEA recommends the district align with the most accurate cohort depending on their intended plans moving forward and follow the new timeline and next steps. If you're a new TIA lead, let's take a look at the immediate next steps. First, we wanna ensure that your points of contact are up to date. You can update those via our online form. We require a primary point of contact and at least one secondary point of contact. If you're not sure who is currently listed as your district TIA leads, please email us at tia.tea.texas.gov. Second, please confirm your cohort track and system approval status. Find out if the system was not fully approved at one of the stages, what is the more accurate cohort timeline? Then you can study the next steps for your most accurate current cohort. Please connect with your previous TIA lead and any supporting departments if possible to learn everything you can about your system and any stakeholder engagement that occurred before you came on as the TIA lead. You can contact our inbox TIA at tea.texas.gov to request access to our Google Drive folder. That's where we will house session materials for any of our online webinars. You can also register for cohort webinars and view earlier webinars in our Google Drive folder. Now we'll take a look at how TIA approval status aligns with the cohort track. For districts on track in cohorts A through C, they are fully approved to issue designations and are already receiving funding. Cohort A districts submitted their initial application in the fall of 2019 with a data capture year of 2018-2019. Funding was first awarded in fall of 2020. Cohort A districts are in a continual data capture with the option to issue new designations annually. A renewal process will start in 22-23 for a 23-24 renewal. Cohort B districts submitted an application in spring of 2020 with a data capture year of 2019-2020. Their first funding was awarded in spring of 21, and they are also ongoing with their data capture with an option to issue new designations each fall. 
Cohort C districts submitted their application in spring of 2020 with a data capture year of 2020-2021. Cohort C districts received their first round of funding in spring of 22. Moving forward, they are now in an ongoing data capture with an option to issue new designations annually. Here's a list of onboarding tasks if you're a new to TIA lead in a fully approved cohort A through C district. We recommend starting by reviewing all of your system documentation. If you're unable to access any of these materials, please email our team at tia at tea.texas.gov. These documents were either sent to TEA by the district or the district received the documents from TEA. The first is your most recent accepted system application, and if applicable, your most recently accepted expansions or modification application. These will include all the information about your local designation system, including eligible assignments, student growth measures, observation protocols, and the spending plan. TEA provided districts with a list of eligible service IDs and campuses. You may also wish to view past data validation reports and the annual program submission. If your district is using a local appraisal rubric, please also look for the observation rubric crosswalk. We recommend meeting with district and campus administrators to ensure the continued data capture and fidelity of implementation. We also recommend discussing options to apply for system expansion or modifications if needed. The application window for that will run from November to April 17th. We recommend requesting access to SCOMS to review your, issued, your history of issued designations and allotments. This is an application behind TEAL and instructions are linked within this slide deck. If your district is issuing new designations for 22-23, the data submission deadline is October 20th and designation fees are due November 15th. If you have any questions about the documents or timelines, don't hesitate to reach out to our team through our inbox. Now we'll take a look at the cohort track and status for cohorts D and beyond. Cohort D districts submitted an application in the spring of 21 and completed their data capture year in 21-22. Cohort D districts will find out if their system was fully approved in the 22-23 school year, and if so, will be able to issue designations and receive funding in the spring of 23. So their status is that their application is accepted and data capture year is complete, and their approval status is depending data submission and validation as of the fall of 22. Cohort E districts applied in the spring of 22 and are currently in their data capture year in 22-23. In spring of 24, they will find out if their system was approved and if their designations and allotments go through. Cohort F districts are still in the process of creating a local designation system and engaging stakeholders. The goal for, goal for Cohort F is to submit their application by the spring of 2023 and begin capturing data in the 23-24 school year. Cohort F districts, if they remain on track, are set to receive funds in the spring of 2025. Cohort G follows one year beyond Cohort F. Cohort G districts are generally still exploring TIA or in the early phases of stakeholder engagement and system design. Cohort D districts are pending full system approval. We recommend starting by reviewing your system documentation, including your most recent system application, an expansions modifications application, if applicable, your list of eligible service IDs and campuses, and your observation rubric crosswalk if you're using a local appraisal rubric. If you need any of these documents, please email tia at tea.texas.gov. You can also meet with your district and campus administrators to ensure the continued data capture and fidelity of implementation. The data submission deadline for Cohort D is October 20th, and designated teacher fees are due November 15th. You can also discuss the option to apply for system expansion or modification. The application window will run from November to April 17th. If your Cohort D district did not submit data or designations in the fall of 22, you will then be on a Cohort E timeline. If you're a new TIA lead and your district is an on-track Cohort E, your application has been accepted and you're currently in the data capture year. We recommend starting by reviewing your accepted system application to ensure you fully understand the local designation system. If your district uses a local appraisal rubric, we also recommend viewing the observation rubric crosswalk. If any documents are missing, please email us at tia at tea.texas.gov to request. Please also meet with your campus administrators to review the progress of data capture and ensure fidelity of implementation. You may also wish to explore the option to apply for a system expansion or modification. This application is due by April 17th. Cohort F districts are preparing to apply for the first time or perhaps reapply if they were part of a previous cohort. 
we recommend starting by studying previous stakeholder engagement and decisions made. This may include talking to campus administrators and other departments at the district level. If the cohort track was delayed from a previous cohort, we recommend exploring reasons for the delay and looking through your existing documentation. Then you can begin reviewing system development resources, including the Cohort F system application and scoring rubric, the TIA planning guide, and the TIA manual. The Cohort F system application will post in November and will be due by April 17, 2023. Here's a summary of resources that will help you onboard to your role as a new TIA lead. The first is our TIA webinar schedule. TEA provides targeted assistance by cohort in a series of webinars throughout the school year. The webinar schedule will give a description of the webinars and a Zoom registration link for each. We also have a TIA manual scheduled for release in fall of 2022. This is a comprehensive guide to all TIA policies and procedures and different stages of system development. We have a TIA planning guide available for cohort F and beyond. Please study your system application documents if your district has already applied for TIA or the system application documents posted on our website if your district has not yet applied. We also recommend you reviewing the data submission documents or data validation report if your district is in cohort A through D. Thank you for taking the time to view this webinar. The TIA team looks forward to supporting you and your district as you work to design and implement your local designation system.